so we have a uh, another craftsman, Briggs and Stratton. I believe it's six and three quarter. The covers in there. The well goes right here. Um, it apparently needed a new spark plug, so they put an E3 in there and still didn't work. Um, which kind of brings up like a little rant. I don't know how many times I've ever been told it just needs a spark plug. Well, I maybe count on three fingers how many times the spark plug was actually bad. So, not that I'm saying it can't be spark, but this is a newer mower. It has a doesn't have points. It most likely is not spark. We will still check that, of course, but I want to say 97% of the time it's not going to be spark. It's going to be fuel. But it has an auto choke system, so sometimes that can be a little problematic, um, but we'll take care of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, we'll, we'll check the oil. Full, and it looks very decent, actually. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, cable, excellent condition. It's a newer model. I can never remember how to read this, but I want to say... 2012 or 16. I think it's 16. Um, so not very old at all. Um, right here, I'm going to take a look at that as well. You can read the codes on here and it will kind of tell you the age of it. So, first things first, let us go ahead and we're going to take off the carburetor. I already checked for spark. It has spark. It has compression. It's just going to be a carburetor clean. So next time um, you see me and have this taken off, it's the same thing as before. Um, five sixteenths, three screws on the other side. The only difference is this. That's actually very important. This is a quarter inch. There is a bolt on the little arm that controls the choke. That's connected to the spring. Take that spring off. In fact, let's just do that now. Okay, so here we are. This is what I was talking about. There's a little spring. Hopefully you can see that. It's not too blurry. Um, but take it off very slowly. And then make sure you do not lose that. This was a little stretched out, so we might be getting a new one. And then... Do not use a um, impact or drill on this. Take a hand screwdriver and crack it free. I cannot emphasize this enough because what will happen, I've seen it dozens of times, you will take this off, one click on the impact or drill if it's on a high setting, and this will snap that little uh, arm right there and you have two choices from there. One, you turn into a primer, which you have to buy a new carburetor for, or you still have to buy a new carburetor, and you have to buy the right one for this, which is a little bit more expensive. Um, so don't do that, okay? So as I showed before, two five sixteenths and a third one right there. This comes off. Three eighths bolts on the carburetor, and uh, next time you see me, we will be over at the carburetor station. Okay, so we have our white cup, half-inch socket. Let's see what we have. Let's drain a little gas out of it. If you tip it towards the fuel um, inlet, it will drip off a little bit. Oh, I see water already. Okay, well, I think we know why it probably wasn't working. So unlike a larger carburetor, water does not go through the jets on this very well. So it will just block it off. It can't suck it through. Even if you choke it, no matter what, you, the only real way to do it, is some of them have like a little, not Briggs, but some carburetor of other brands will have a, uh, like a drain screw. That sometimes will work. Uh, but the best thing to do, take off the bowl and just clean it out very thoroughly and that's disgusting that is a lot Ugh. there's also like goo in there so 
So what I think happened is someone had bought this, loved it, cherished it, put it in the shed, didn't quite change the, or take the gas out of it because they went to gas station and just put normal fuel in there, no non-ethanol, and realized one day I should probably put fuel stabilizer. Did it, oh yeah, there's even more of the goo in there. Um, did that, put too much probably, ran it a little bit, and then thought it was all good. Realized that it wasn't working the next spring, and um, now it's here. Because when you see a like, goo, it usually means that there's fuel stabilizer. And fuel stabilizer probably will work. I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest. I've never really had good experiences with it, but, you know, maybe in some areas it will work. Ethanol and fuels, when it fluctuates temperatures, condensation occurs, and then you just get water in no matter what. Um, so the best way to do it, just run it dry. Okay, that's my rant. And maybe take the wool seal off. Actually, it's pretty good. A little grimy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Try to snap. I'll leave that. And yeah, I will bring it back once it's done. Okay, got the carburetor out, nice and clean. Wire wheeled it a little bit. The carburetor still is on there. Everything moves nice and securely. So now. And I blew everything out of the compressed air. I'm going to just kind of make sure the float is nice and clean. And my hands look dirty, but I did wash them for two reasons. One, it's coronavirus time. And two, I don't want to get dirt in there. Okay. So I just put the needle in this little slot. I put that, the pin in there. Now, this part, cover your ears. Just give it a nice little blowing. I'm going to blow through here and see if I hear air. If I do, it's bad. But if I don't, I will then lift this. And if I do hear air, that's good. Perfect. Now, we put the seal back on, put the bowl back on, put that off to the side. So I like to do this with the newer ones. Um, this is a micro drill set or drill bit. It comes in a set like this. It's a couple bucks on Amazon. So what I like to do is I take the jet or the bolt. I put all the drill bits I can in there until I get to the point where it's snug. And I go one above it. Now yet again, this is only for the newer ones. And then I drill out that center jet just a little bit until I break free. Spin it around there so it kind of deburs it. And then put that off to the side. Whatever you do, don't lose it. And then I like to take some Compress there, cover your ears, and just kind of blow all the remaining pieces out. So now, we take the gasket, put it back on, put that back onto the bowl, or the carburetor, put the, hold that in place, screw it as far as you can with your fingers, and this needs to be snug, but not super tight. And there we are. Um, so, two things I notice. This is the gas that came out of it. Nasty. And the second, this is the right plug. It even comes from Briggs & Stratton. It is a 796112. Or you could do an RJ, RJL, RJ19LM. There we go. But look at the size. This is the plug that came out of it. See the size difference? I'm surprised this thing even... Like the cylinder just smashed into it. 
I guess it is a flathead, so it's probably not... Uh, it's just amazing. Um, just because it will fit in there doesn't mean you should, so... When you do buy another one, either take that number, yet again, 796112, or just get RJ1911LM. Oh, RJ19LM. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the carburetor, bring you over, and be right back. Okay, so um, hopefully this works out better. Um, I usually have a person helping me with this, but someone has to do something crazy like work. So we're going to have to do it by ourselves. Same thing, you put the linkage on the carburetor first, and then I like to put the fuel line. Take our pliers for the fuel clip. Over so it's nice and secure. And then I put fuel in this already. Um, well, I was waiting for it to be the uh, carburetor to be cleaned, so uh, it should have fuel in already. We're gonna it'll give us time to see if anything's leaking too. Um, next, we have the three eighths bolts. Very, very slowly and carefully. We can cross thread and the gasket for the carburetor on the intake tube is, is there. There we go. Okay. So now, this is the kind of annoying part. You have to put this little arm inside this um, slot and then uh, kind of twist it down. Now you need to make sure that this moves freely. If it does not, it will not work. This one does. Sometimes you have to move it around and jiggle it and just make sure that it um, freely moves. If it doesn't, well, you get to the great joy of taking off the gas tank, taking off the cover, and putting this all together with the cover off. Okay, so this moves freely. We take our spring. There's, there's a little slot on the actual cover. Don't let go of it, like I did. And we put it on the corresponding one. And if you look, choke closed, exhaust gets hot, pushes a little lever, choke open. So far, set. And I don't know if this happens over time or what, but... Um, Almost every single one of them, you have to bend this a little bit more straight. There we go. Okay. Um, no leaking. Oh, maybe a little bit, actually. No, it's dry. Okay. Um, now, we take the cover. 5 sixteenths. Get that ready. Change our bit and make sure that the the crankcase vent corresponds with that. Put that in there first. Put the screws in. Very slowly. Garage puppies having a hard attack. be right back. Okay, so now it's taken care of. Um, this is the filter came off. It's not horrible, but we'll get rid of that. Um, new filter. So, let's go ahead and put that on. And, by the way, that's the good plug. And um, I did have to tighten the bull nut on the carburetor. I've checked it. So uh, let me take that off real quick. I have to explain something. So if it starts to overflow out of throat, your knee is bad. If it's starting to come out from just the bottom, your gasket or your seal on the actual jet is bad. This is dry on top. So when I felt down there, it was just a little wet. And I looked at it, it was just the need to be tightened. 
so I tightened it. And it's just one of those things where you have to not make it too tight, but you also need to make it just tight enough. So let's see what we have for covers in here. We have the side chute. We have that. And we have the other corresponding piece. The screws in there. Yeah. No screws. Okay. Let me go find some screws and um, get that screwed down. Okay. So, this is kind of showing how uh, I sharpened and balanced the blade. Everything looks clean underneath there. There's no worries. Next thing, um, I already plugged in the spark. Let's see how she runs. Okay, well, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, here I'll see Garage Puppy probably. Oh, garage Puppy. Um, she is five months old and still getting used to the noise. Anyway, so um, have any questions, like, subscribe, comment below, and have a good day.